everyone. Welcome to my third sketchbook tour. I figured it was about time since I now have about half filled this sketchbook that I could show you some of my new drawings. I've done a lot of animals since I recently got this book filled with copyright free illustrations of animals. It's a book that was recommended by Dee Dee Willingham on her channel. Um, and there are just many black and white illustrations that you can use as references, and so I decided to try more new animals. This here is my first time drawing an owl. Um, I used some white gel pen for the eyes and the brightest highlights. I used a colorless blending pencil to really bring out the shadow. And um, I really think I captured the expression very well. Even though I use the reference images from the book, I still try to add my own take on each of the images. As in this case, again, um, there was an illustration of a, a full giraffe, and I just thought that, I think it was a full giraffe, but I thought the head, especially the facial expression, uh, really drew to, uh, me to it, and I, ex I exaggerated the smile a little bit, and I thought it kind of had a little coy grin. Um, and I think they're, they're kind of sweet, so I added the heart, and you will recognize this uh, in my Giraffe Valentine video, uh, which was inspired by my drawing that I did here. I figured, oh, I'd like to send this to my grandma, but I, since this is actually part of my sketchbook, I did not want to remove it. So my battery went out, but I recall I was saying that since this drawing was in my sketchbook, I didn't want to remove it, but I still wanted to send it as a valentine to my grandmother, so I decided to copy it onto a new drawing, and you can watch my process in that video, which I link in the description box below. Again here, I use the white gel pen for a dot on the eye to bring it out. And I used my Prismacolor colored pencils for the rest. This is perhaps my least favorite drawing in the sketchbook. It was my first attempt trying to draw a turtle. And although I'm happy with some of the lines I made in the shell, I could not seem to get it to look right or the way I intended it to. And so I think you can see some of my frustration come out in the many different colors I put in the background in an attempt to rescue the drawing. Um, ultimately, you know, it was a fun experience and maybe the next time I will do a better turn. This was my first time trying to draw a squirrel. I focus mostly on the highlights and the shadow, so there's some of the texture of the fur, but it's not a fully realistic squirrel. I'm happy since I seem to have achieved what my focus was, um, but I think I will try other ones in the future. This here is a dog that I know from life, um, part of my extended family. This is a very exuberant dog, a very loving dog, um, and he's very photogenic. So I took this picture of him being very excited, and I, I just knew I would have to draw it, and so I spent a couple hours drawing this with my Prismacolors. I did use the gel pen on the eye for the brightest highlights, but I was very happy with the way this turned out. I think it really captured him. This was my first time drawing a flamingo. I used the reference from that book. But that book is in black and white again, and so all of this was me imagining the colors and sort of creating a scene around it and take, doing my own take on it. Um, I did focus again on shadow and light, and I, uh, I believe I put a dot of the gel pen right there on the eye to really bring it out. I think it, it turned out fine. It was a fun uh, experiment. And then here, this seal, um, I was having fun with lots of different colors, trying to use purples and blues, um, and the whites. It's kind of strange the way the wax works with the white, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Some different pencils function differently on this paper, and uh, it makes even the texture, and it changes what seems like is closer and farther away. Um, I haven't quite figured out the complete balance. 
but it, it did end up making an, an interesting texture on the skin there. I added some pencil here to make it look a little bit like sand. Here was my first attempt at trying to draw my own hand. I was inspired, I think, the artist is Lena Dania or Dania, and she had done a video in journals of doing her hand, and so I thought I would try holding my hand while I did the drawing. Um, obviously, if I had taken a picture of my hand, it probably would have been a lot simpler, especially since my hand kept moving, and you can see here, that's probably where my hand kept changing and it made it much more difficult to do it accurately. I think for a first try I'm pretty pleased with this but I, I do imagine I will be trying again in the future. This was also from life. It was a tree I was sitting in front of and I thought it was a really nice tree so I focused on the darks and the lights. I didn't complete it because I got pretty cold um, I did take a picture of this tree, so I may try to work on it in the future, but I'm still not sure what I would do to make it my best version of that tree. Here was my first attempt at drawing a hippo. There was a full-size drawing of the full body of a hippo in the copyright-free art book, and so I just decided to focus on the head and, and make it much larger. And so it has a bit of a sketchy texture. Again, I think I used the highlight on the eye. Um, I mostly wanted to capture its sort of serene, calm feeling. And I think I did manage that. Uh, I'm trying to be more relaxed with having a sketchy look sometimes. And that is how this one turned out. This was based on a pumpkin I saw back in the fall. I took a picture of it because I thought it was very pretty and it had some flowers near it. I didn't feel inspired to draw it until this week, and so here it is. Um, I really enjoyed all the different shades of orange and yellow and adding some of the dots of the white gel pen for a little kind of sparkle effect. Um, I, th I think it captured what I wanted to very well. You may recognize this llama from the previous sketchbook. It's the same llama, but from a different pose. Again, I took a picture of this llama when I met it a bunch of years ago. It had such a great personality that I really wanted to try drawing it again. Um, it looks a little maybe more foreboding than I anticipated because it was very much a sweet llama, but um, this was what I did. And um, again, you can see the gel pen. Here was a, a goldfish. I used the reference image from the copyright free book. But I've also had many goldfish in my life, so I felt very attached to the idea of having a goldfish to draw. I used um, the Prismacolor pencils all throughout and left some of the texture on the background because I felt it, it added to the drawing instead of smoothing it out with a colorless blender pencil as I might have done. You can see here where I use the gel pen for a little sparkle, and I, I was very pleased with my goldfish. So This here is also a dog I know from life, and who is a very special dog. He's very sweet. He, he's been very fearful. He was rescued from a parking lot, and over the years he's become much more calm and, and much happier and, and comfortable and he, he's also very loving and sweet and I think I really captured his essence in this picture. It was based on a photograph I took of him and so I was really happy to have the opportunity to draw him. This drawing came out uh, more cartoonish than I anticipated. I'm going to move the camera a little to show it a little more. It was my first time drawing a lion's face, and again, I used a reference photo um, just focusing on the head, and yet I just could not seem to get the proportions correct. And um, I wanted to focus on the eyes, and again, I, I just accepted that it became very sketchy uh, in the texture, and that I just was not going to get the anatomy accurate. But it was fun to do, and so I just played with colors and shadows, and. I'm glad I did it. 
This similarly was a whale I decided to draw uh, using those blues and purples and whites. I wanted to make it look kind of happy and I added the waves. It was just kind of a silly, fun little drawing. Uh, this was a cat that was based on a cat in the book. Um, since that book is black and white, I just decided to make the cat orange. And in the original drawing that I used as a reference, there were other things going on. I think there was something here. But I didn't feel like drawing those things. And I considered drawing some yarn over here, but I thought that just might be too distracting. The cat became a little more intense than I expected, and I think drawing the background made its emotions seem even more um, perhaps angry than I meant. But I do think I did a good job on the fur texture, so that was the part I was most pleased about, even if the cat looks a little sadder than I might like. This here was um, an attempt, when I was watching recently the Miyazaki movie, castle in the sky, I just got a, a real, um, it inspired me to want to draw something sort of fantastical or whimsical, and I wanted to draw like a tree with vines and like a little pond. It did not come out the way I meant to uh, have it come out. It looks a little verstunkener, but um, I added some bright gel pen just to make it cheerier at least, and it was fun to do, so even though I'm not pleased with the result, it's okay. This here, I believe it is a pelican. I used the reference from the book again to draw this pelican. Um, it was black and white, and I did not bother to research what a real pelican looked like, so this is entirely just my imagining of remembering what it might look like, and adding some clouds, taking advantage of the fact that white disintegrates on this paper to try to just become very light and foggy, and then I really intensify the white on the actual bird um, and added in the extra colors for some shading. I think the personality came through and I like um, the way the eye turned out and the, the large beak. The last drawing so far in this book is this eye, which is my eye. I um, took a f I you just used a photo that was of my entire head and really zoomed in on the eye. So it may not have as much detail as it could have, but it, I used all the detail that was in that particular image and the what I could find in the zoom. Um, I had originally thought I would just try to draw an eye from scratch and try to imagine it, but I could tell I was doing it so inaccurately. So it seemed so much better to actually look at the proportions and that's what I would do is where I'd, I'd measure, okay, it's this far and this goes this far. And so I draw out the little dots as I go first to get a sense of where things are gonna end and then I sort of connect the dots slowly. And, and I do use the electric eraser a lot to correct. I still couldn't quite get the skin tone completely accurate. Um, I was also wearing eyeshadow, which was not as dark, but it did add to the shadow, so it was a little more reddish pomegranate color, along with the um, sort of pinkish flesh tone. Um, so yes, and I was focusing a lot on the gray shadows of the eye, and again, the white highlights, I used the white gel pen. Um, but this was, the rest was all Prismacolor. Uh, and so I was very pleased with the eye, how it turned out since it was my first time drawing my own eye. Um, and that is the end of this book so far. I do have many more pages to go, and I expect I will be doing a follow-up video once I've filled those. If you'd like to check out my previous sketchbook tours, please do. I will link them below. And if you like my art, please make sure to check out my shop at society6.com slash slothflorist, where you can get all sorts of things like mugs and pillows and notebooks, t-shirts, all sorts of things with my art on it. So thank you again for watching. Uh, please like if you enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and have a good night.